what we're doing in this paper is examining uh, the approach that the FDA takes to medical device regulation and asking the question, is it optimal or how close to optimal is it? There's a raging debate about whether the FDA is too difficult on medical device regulation, whether it's too hard for device manufacturers to get their device through the regulatory process, or whether they're too lax and they let too many uh, potentially harmful devices through the process. And so our research asks the question, how much information does uh, the FDA regulatory process generate for the market to use in deciding what to device to, con to use in a, a given patient? And uh, should they require more information or less information? And that's what our paper seeks to uh, address. What we did is we compared um, the behavior of devices in the U.S., which has a much more uh, difficult and rigorous regulatory standard, to the European Union, which has a much less uh, re uh, informational requirements to get their devices through the approval process. So we compared how the devices that were common in both markets, uh, how their market share evolved over time, and we compared that to devices that were only offered in the EU, which is... Uh, would typically happen since the uh, EU market is much easier to enter, there's many more devices, and we examined how those market shares evolved over time and used that information to make inferences about the information that was being generated by the regulatory process and, and then translate that into uh, real consumer welfare measures. What we found is that the uh, U.S. FDA regulatory process for the devices we looked at, which were second generation uh, stents, cardiac stents, was pretty close to optimal. Uh, and while the EU, which has very lax regulatory standards, was too, too lax um, in that if they were to implement more rigorous informational requirements for getting devices through to the market, they would improve consumer welfare. And that surprised us. That surprised us that the U.S. was so close to optimal, given um, the calls for reforms at the FDA. We kind of expected the FDA to be I mean, too, too difficult to get through. The trade-off the, uh, the regulator has to make is to, if you require more information, you delay the introduction of the device and make it more difficult for devices to enter the market, raise the entry cost. So the trade-off that the regulator is making is the increased informational content um, of increasing uh, clinical trials, for example, and the benefits of that information, so that's the, the kind of the benefit side, the cost is that you delay entry and you... Uh, and, and that's a real cost. You have less access to device. So there's a real access versus information trade-off here. So one of the things we looked at is how could we improve the process? Um, and what we found is if we could um, make the post-market uh, informational generation process more uh, informative, uh, that would generate a lot of welfare because then we could even relax the pre-market requirements more um, and then more devices would get to market quicker. Um, and so that's the one thing that uh, I think the takeaway is that there's a lot to be gained from increasing post-market surveillance of medical devices. Hopefully this research will dispel the notion that the FDA is really way too uh, difficult for particularly second generation devices. Um, I think our research pretty, in my view, uh, pretty uh, convincingly shows that they actually may be close to doing the right thing. Well, there really is no other kind of similar analysis out there that's been able to credibly um, identify the causal relationship between uh, regulatory regimes and this information content and the benefits that patients get from these devices. So I, we think our, our research is kind of one of a kind. And there's some older research that's related to, but we think ours is pretty unique in, in that sense. So what's next is, you know, it, it's, uh, we want to see kind of what market forces are at play that would um, allow medical device and cause medical device manufacturers to run their own clinical trials and provide this information uh, on their own and not through you know, requirements of the FDA and, and kind of providing information to the market. And so that's kind of where we're next going with this research.